Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going through the last topic of thermal physics, which is thermal processes. So here's a few things that we want to look at today, so have a read through that, and we'll begin the video. So conduction is something that you may have heard a lot of in the past, and so conduction is basically the process by which heat or electricity is transmitted through the material of a particular substance. And how well heat or electricity is transmitted is dependent on, you know, the structural integrity of the substance. Some substances are very good conductors, meaning that uh, heat and electri electricity pass by through those particular substances very easily. Uh, whereas in other materials, like insulators, uh, it's the opposite and heat or electricity have a very difficult time being transmitted through the structure. And so how this transmission works is through molecular vibrations. In other words, a transfer of a kinetic energy that occurs within the structure. So metals are good conductors. And the reason for that is because of its structure, where you've got the lattice of positive ions, but more importantly, you've got these delocalized electrons that are fully mobile and always moving around throughout the entire structure. And so when you find that one end of the metal is heated, then the particles on that side where the heat is being applied gain kinetic energy, meaning the particles, both the electrons and the positive ions, are start to they're, they're gonna start to start and vibrate quicker as a result of their gain in kinetic energy. And therefore, when these particles start to vibrate, it starts to affect the neighboring particles as well. And the neighboring particles in turn start to vibrate and the electrons become more mobile as a result as well. So you can see how this has a domino effect where the increased kinetic energy of one side of the structure starts to affect the neighboring particles and you find that the energy gets transferred along the structure. And so the transfer of kinetic energy in the form of vibrations is how heat is transferred from one end to the other. And because of these free mobile electrons that move rapidly between the structure of one end to the other, then that really rapid, uh, that really rapidly increases the transmission of energy from one end to the other. And so a uh, common theme of good conductors is that they usually have these free electrons that help assist with that transmission and therefore most metals are good conductors as a result of that because metals have free electrons by nature. And you can take a look at this little experiment just to tell you how good of a conductor metals really are and we're going to be using a copper bar and we're going to have these drawing pins that will be scattered and adhered to the copper bar by wax blobs that can be melted with heat. And what you're going to do is you're going to get a Bunsen burner and start to heat up this end here. And because of our awareness of how heat gets transmitted in metals now, uh, you'll you know, theoretically understand that the heat will become transmitted across at a fairly rapid pace given that copper is a good conductor of heat. And what you'll find is that as you start to heat one end of the copper bar, each of the waxed blobs will begin to melt and the drawing pins will start to fall off as a result of that. And you'll, f you'll find that the sequence will be that this one here falls off first, then this one, then this one, and this one. As the fact goes that the heat gets transmitted this way here. So once this gets hot, and then this gets hot, and this gets hot, and etc. And you'll notice that the falling of the drawing pins will replicate that. Uh, conduction is, uh, is, is also relevant when we talk about uh, poor conductors, uh, which uh, you can also call insulators. And rubber, as an example, is a very bad conductor. And one reason for that is, structurally speaking, of course, they don't have any free electrons, um, and therefore the passage of the 
vibrations or the transmission of kinetic energy is very difficult in structures without free electrons and rubber is a prime example of that but also water as well is not a very good conductor and you can see that water is not a very conductor because if you have this experimental setup where you've got the test tube having boiling water at the top as a result of the Bunsen burner that starts to heat up this top bit of the tube here um, and you've got a metal uh, gauze to separate the ice that you're going to put down at the bottom, you'll find that although this top bit starts to boil up, the ice never really melts. And the result, uh, you know, is, is um, suggestive of the fact that you're heating up this bit here and this bit's boiling, but the, tr the heat isn't really getting transmitted down to the bottom because if it did, then clearly the ice would begin to melt. But the fact that it doesn't shows you that water is a fairly poor conductor and although you're heating the top here, not much heat is being transmitted down to the bottom of the tube. We're going to talk about the idea of convection, which is a method of heat transfer that occurs strictly in liquids and gases, so solids are out of the picture. And how it works is that when you, when you heat up liquid or fluid, uh, or gas for that matter, then water molecules, because we're taking a look at water in this example, gain kinetic energy, as you may already know, and that means that the molecules move faster. And as a result of that, they move more further apart, uh, so the density of the water decreases. The warm, or in other words, less dense water, start to rise above the cooler and more dense water. And remember, density is really just um, how packed up something is. You know, something is more dense when there's a lot of molecules that are in within close proximity and something is determined to be less dense if the molecules are more spread apart and more separated, right? And so that makes sense. As you heat water, the water molecules start to become more separated. And so those separated, more heated up liquid molecules will actually be less dense than water that is not heated and more cool. And so as a result of that, there's a density difference between heated and not heated water. So if you heat this part here, then the heated liquid is going to rise to the top, whereas the more cool liquid is going to fall down to the bottom as a result of the density difference. Now, the water at the top is going to begin to cool down a little bit. Um, and so the water rises up, the warm water rises up, and the cool water gets pushed down to the bottom. Okay, so you've got the warm water that's rising and cool water going down. Now, as the water molecules cool even further, the molecules begin to lose kinetic energy because, again, the temperature is, uh, has a direct correlation to kinetic energy. And so, as a result of that, the molecules begin to cluster more together with increasing density and the colder water shrinks down at the bottom. Um, but the cycle repeats, the warm and less dense water down at the bottom, because you're heating it down at the bottom here, begins to rise up again, and you have this endless cycle where you've got this convection current, uh, where the warm water rises and the cool water goes down, but down at the bottom, water becomes warm again, so it goes up, and the cool water goes down, so you have this cycle, and this cycle that you find in liquids and gases, this is what is known as convection. It's uh, you know a method of heat transfer throughout the structure. Uh, the last sort of topic we want to talk about is radiation, and we're going to talk about an experiment here. And so, you've got uh, infrared radiation, which is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, um, and that spectrum is something that we'll talk about in the next topic. Uh, but pretty much at this point, infrared is emitted by any thermal or hot object. And infrared rays can be emitted, it can be absorbed, or it can be reflected. And so, you know, different types of surfaces can affect the emission or the absorption or the reflection of these rays. And we're going to take a look at that. We're going to have a setup where you've got this cube for four different surfaces here. Okay? Now, the, two, uh, the cube is sort of connected by these... Uh, structural poles that can be rotated to expose the different surfaces of the cube. Um, and we're going to take a look at how those four surfaces are different. Uh, one surface is going to be matte black, 
The other surface is going to be shiny black, one surface is going to be white, and one surface is going to be silver. Okay, so we're talking about, let's just say one, two, at the back there, three, and four. These four surfaces, the top and bottom don't matter. Okay, that's out of the picture there. Uh, so we're going to cover these four different uh, faces or surfaces of the cube and these four different uh, uh, qualities of surfaces. And the cube is filled with boiling water. And the reason for that is because, again, any hot object emits infrared radiation. So we're going to get the cube to uh, pretty much uh, release some infrared radiation by heating it up with hot water, boiling water. Now, a heat detector is going to be placed at a constant distance away from the cube. Let's just say in this case, uh, 50 centimeters, for example. And there's a heat detector there that detects uh, the heat or the infrared rays. Uh, the cube is rotated so that each side faces the heat detector uh, in turn. And what we want to see is you know, how the heat detector reacts to the different surfaces of the cube. And what you'll find, at least in terms of emission of these infrared rays, as, is that matte black will have the highest emission. Then it's going to be shiny black, then it's going to be white, and it's going to be silver being the lowest levels of emission. So that's a trend that you should be aware of. Uh, so I guess the more blacker it is, uh, the higher level of emission. Um, oppositely, the more shinier the lower levels of emission of a surface. So that was looking at the emission side of things. But what about absorption? So if you've got a particular object, you know, how well or how well does it not absorb infrared rays? So let's have a look at that. So what we're going to do is a radiant heater is going to be placed in the middle of two plates. So you've got these two plates here, A, B, uh, at a fixed uh, unique distance away from the heater. Now, of course, these two surfaces are going to be very different. One's going to be matte black, okay, dark black or dull black or matte black, and the other one is going to be shiny silver. And a thermometer is going to be placed on each plate, which is going to measure the temperature of the plates. Now, the heater is going to be switched on, okay, and obviously it's going to start to produce some infrared rays as a result of its heat. And what we want to do is sort of measure, you know, how well each of these surfaces absorb the, um, the, the heat, essentially. And so the temperatures can be measured at each sort of an equal intervals, maybe every minute or something like that, every one minute. Um, and that will tell you how quickly or how well one surface is absorbing the heat than the other. And the results will tell you that the temperature of the matte black plate will increase much quicker than the silver, suggesting that matte black surfaces are better absorbers of radiation, and therefore the temperature of the matte black surface is going to increase more rapidly than the silver one. Uh, so when it comes to uh, the absorption, again, the matte black absorbs better than the silver. Better and worse. So I hope that uh, made sense guys, a relatively short video. If you want some extra resources, we've got freeexamacademy.com where I put the notes and stuff that I use for the PowerPoint and I've got patreon.com where I put extra resources specifically in terms of uh, past paper questions and things like that that we can go and answer together. I've got a lot of resources for chemistry and biology so far. Physics will be coming in the next few months, so watch out for that. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next video.